Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us here this evening. I am um, going to wait maybe another 30 seconds before I start because I see we still have quite a few people joining us. We've got a really fantastic attendance today, and I really appreciate everybody giving up their time. Um, my sense is that today's presentation will be about 20 minutes. Uh, and then I'm very happy to take another 20 minutes of uh, Q&A, depending on the number of questions that there are. So we're probably looking at 40, 45 minutes max. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm going to go straight into it. I'm just, as always, I need to start with the forward-looking statements. You guys can all read faster than I can talk. Um, okay, so let's power through. It's going to be an exciting journey today. And actually, um, I've been really excited all week to have this opportunity to share with all of you how we're executing on our growth strategy. Um, and we talk, you know, we've spoken a number of times on the importance of staying focused and executing. And now it's all about ensuring that our execution is delivering results and making sure that as we build execution capabilities, that we're building best-in-class capabilities that are scalable as we start to broaden the geographic footprint of the company, specifically with the focus on the U.S., starting now B2B and B2C in Q1, and I'll elaborate more on this a little bit later. And then I want to share with you, you've seen a number of announcements. Um, we have really started to build on top of a fantastic team already, an amazing dream team. Of, uh, of partners as far as our advisory board is concerned as well as additional key people coming into the business. So this is where I'm going to focus the discussion for the next 20 minutes and uh, it's going to be a great ride. So just recapping for everybody our Superfruit Nutraceutical growth strategy. Uh, and I'll come back and every single time I talk to you I'll be recapping the strategy. And you'll see the strategy doesn't change. A good strategy doesn't change as you go into execution mode. We see that we have three key priorities, three key routes to market. Firstly, B2B, food and beverage, through our partnership with Batori, where we're going after food and beverage companies. Very high volume, decent margins. Then we have B2B2C going after nutraceutical companies. In some cases, we're going there with Batori. In some cases, we're going there ourselves, direct to major um, multi-level marketing companies. And then B2C, which is the highest margin part of the business that we will be controlling and going direct to consumer and building the relationship with each customer or consumer one at a time. Our focus has been all about turning strategy into execution. And as I've said, it's all about executing, executing, and executing. Well, I'm really, really happy to share with you today that our focus on execution is starting to deliver tangible results, which are important small steps for the company as we start to take big steps in the coming months as we come onto the main stage in the United States of America. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the results really stellar results and I'm so proud of the team that we've delivered in Israel in a very short period of time, results that are way above our expectations. And importantly, we've started to build some really solid capabilities for the business that are scalable and will help differentiate us in the marketplace as we enter into the US market. And the focus today is going to be talking about what we're doing on the B2C nutraceutical side as we go direct to consumers. I will also touch with an update on where we are at with Vittori. So as I mentioned the last time we spoke, we launched our Israeli B2C website. Um, and the website you know, has a lot of quality information. These are just some screen prints of some of the pages on the websites from Clarity demonstrating our unique advantage as far as the functional benefits of vineyard, testimonials, um, talking about 
the actual process and the technology. And we've started to advertise in the marketplace. And here's, here are some examples of some of our ads using Taboola and Outbrain. Outbrain. Um, you can see we have ads in mainstream e-commerce sites pushing with very strong headlines, pushing consumers to like a newspaper article where they read in a very natural format all about the power of Vinia and its relationship to the French paradox, giving them the opportunity to then click on specific call to actions coming into our website. We've also gone with traditional Facebook advertising and Google advertising. So we're leveraging all the different components of the overall mix that's available from an e-commerce perspective. So now let's talk about the results. And as I, as I sit here tonight, it's really exciting to, to share this with you because we've come such a long way in such a short period of time. So let me try and dimensionalize this for you. On an average monthly basis in Little Israel, now remember, Little Israel is literally 8.7 million people, okay, compared to the US of A, which is, you know, 330 plus million people. But in Little Israel, prior to our activities, the company through e-commerce was generating roughly $10,000 a month in revenue. Um, in our first month in October, when we started to turn the tap on, we actually only had two months of media. We delivered just over $40,000. And for the first two weeks of November, first 17 days of November, we've already delivered $55,000. And where I look at where we are today, from an estimated perspective, where we're going to be very close to hitting our target, estimated target of eighty to $90,000 per month here in Israel in only our first full month of executing our plan and our strategy. There's great momentum. And when we look at it from a customer perspective, the topo here on the left-hand side, it should say average customers per month. We were servicing 70 customers per month. In the month of October, it rose to 209 customers. From November 1 to 17, 254 customers. And we believe we will hit between 470 and 500 customers in our first full month. That's a seven times ratio from where we were at. You know, the, the positivity and it, it's like the adrenaline that the team has when you see the orders coming through, through our Google Analytics, through our, our uh, online cash register, where I'm able to see all the, the dollars coming through, uh, literally in real time, packing all the boxes in a beautiful way, having our delivery guy coming in, and day one, it was one huge box. Day two, two huge boxes. Today, he's taking three or four, sometimes five boxes for deliveries. Just looking at the, the expression on the guy's face, he's like, what are you guys doing here? Um, so it's just amazing to see that positive energy and momentum that we have and that we're taking forward now into the balance of November and into obviously December and moving forward in 2021. Now, when we look at the fundamentals from an e-commerce business, specifically when you're building a very high margin e-commerce business, you wanna make sure that you're managing your, your spend and that your ratios are in the right places. And you can see in October, we had a spend level of roughly 10% of revenue. November 1 to 17, we're up to like 17, 18. And we'll probably get to as we build the brand, because some of our spending is on building the brand up to between 25 and 30%, which is where you want to be in the first year when you're actually building a brand from an e-commerce perspective. So I'm very, very happy. And I'm going to share with you a little bit later the unique economics that we have as far as our overall co uh, cost of acquisition is versus the first time revenue deposit from our customers. When we break down these results even further, we see that the average revenue per transaction has increased 29%. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our customers today are spending on average $189 every time they come and are purchasing Vinia on our website.
It's a significant validation on the quality and the efficacy of the product and the loyalty of our consumers. I was really surprised at our ability to grow this number, which is already extraordinarily high, and specifically when we're bringing so many new customers into the funnel. And talking about new customers, and we're watching this very, very closely, in the month of November, and it increases every single day, we see that roughly 75% of the customers coming in are new recruits, new customers coming in, which is exactly where we want to be. In fact, I want to try and push this up to 80% as we grow our customer overall customer count. Now, when we look at first-time customers, they're buying roughly 175 US dollars with our existing customers as a result of our new packages and our pricing strategy have increased their spend by 52%. This demonstrates an undefined loyalty towards the brand and the fact that they cannot live without Vinia as an important part of their lives, which demonstrates, again, the quality of the product and the overall functional impact on the consumer. I'm going to talk a little bit about the mix of packages. And we did something which I thought was, you know, I talked about and I shared this with you um, in, our, in, a, in our, our last meeting. We talked about how we had a unique program where we tried to move people to upsize them to buying four months as a minimum of Vinia. And we did this by giving them a free bottle of a premium red wine. And that totally synced with the core proposition of Vinia that we have all the benefits of Pisces resveratrol in every single capsule, which is equivalent to one bottle of red wine. And you can see when we give consumers their vinya, it's done in a uniquely branded way. It's an experience. The feedback we've had from consumers has been unbelievable. When they get their vinya box, they're used to ordering their vitamins or their magnesium or whatever it is on a website, and it comes literally wrapped in bubble wrap if you're lucky and you have to tear open the paper. Here they're getting beautiful vineyard presented to them in a unique way <clears throat> with a clear communication around the uniqueness of the Pisces resveratrol and vineyard as it relates to the same amount in one bottle of red wine. Um, and you can see as you open the, the heart and the, 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 the box in the shape of a heart, there's another box and our vineyard capsule stands up almost like a diamond because in their lives it really is a diamond. And this is where, how special we want to be with our consumers. So a lot of thought has gone into this, and these are how we're bringing core marketing, branded consumer marketing capabilities into a space where most companies are not, do not have these capabilities at the core of their business. The mix of packages is very, very healthy for us. And our bottle of wine offer really has helped enormously. You can see the entry point starter is only 6% of our revenue. Only 6% of our revenue. Our four-month package, which is where the bottle of wine kicks in, is 43% of our overall revenue. And that's at that roughly $145 price. Then we have an eight month package at 12%. And then our one year package, where we're actually delivering one year of vineyard to the consumer in these boxes, is roughly 40% of the mix with a retail price of $350. And we see a lot of our existing customers and many of our new customers that have high levels of affluence buying the 12 month proposition. So these really are extraordinary results and really emphasize, emphasize the overall trust that the consumer has in the quality and the ability of Vinia to make a difference in their lives. When we look at the Google Analytics and we understand exactly, and we're literally mining the analytics like crazy, we're like a bunch of data freaks over here looking at every single transaction and every connecting every single dot 
we see that our targeting is working and it's spot on. We're going after our primary audience of 45 plus. 70% of our revenue is coming from people who are 45 plus. With our secondary target, which is more around preventative healthcare, in the 35 to 44 with roughly 20% of the overall consumption. And we also see more males versus females, which is also indicative of some of the, the more cardiac related challenges that people have skew slightly more on the male side. This is the money chart that I've been waiting to share with you. Our cost of acquisition is encouraging, specifically given the first time purchase value. Our cost per acquisition is $54 per person. This is per new customer. Okay, so we take all of our media spend and we divide it by the number of new customers. We don't include existing customers. That is $54. And I'm generating, we are generating $174 from a first time purchase value. That means is that literally I get a three times return compared to what I'm spending. Show me any other e-commerce business that has economic fundamentals like this. And this is why we're so excited to be taking the big step forward in Q1 into the US with these kind of economics behind the business. We're deploying what I call servant customer leadership. We're building this business customer by customer, one, one at a time. Every customer is critical. Michael, who heads up our customer success team in Israel, is literally engaged with all our customers. And we had, in the past, had 100% of our customers calling in to purchase their vineyard. So an important part of building our new e-commerce strategy was to shift the mix away from people just calling to actually build a very simple site, an overall user journey to have even the more mature consumers feeling comfortable to go in and purchase their vineyard through the e-commerce site. And I'm very happy to say we've shifted the mix drastically in the first six weeks with now 60% of our consumers going and purchasing direct through the e-commerce site, but we still have a number of consumers that feel more comfortable to speak to our customer success team, to ask them questions, to understand more about the product. And for us, this is uh, invaluable as well because we're able to understand our customer and also drive that critical conversion at this important moment of truth in the customer journey. Desktop has been our main driver, given specifically given the age profile of our customers, but also through our analytics, we found that we had an opportunity to optimize mobile and in order to increase our conversion rates. And in fact, our conversion rate on desktop was three times greater than mobile, and this bothered us. So we've gone, and through A-B testing, we've gone into, and actually already changed the number of facets on our mobile site how we actually displayed our pricing, simplifying the user journey given the nature of an of a actual mobile phone versus a desktop. And we're starting to see some of the implications of that. So my point to you here is we've got our eyes on the ball. We're watching all the analytics every single day and we're making changes to optimize every possible metric and piece of execution to improve our overall conversion. But we're not stopping here. In fact, we just started. And I want to share with you the vision on how we're going to build what I call the multiple revenue layers over the next three months in our business. Today, we're generating an eighty dollars to $90,000 business a month just on the bottom layer, which is paid digital media. That's what makes me excited because as you build more and more layers, of revenue, we're going to be able to grow that baseline. Moving forward, we will start to utilize other media. For example, radio is still very effective in Israel for the target of 45 plus. We're then going to build a customer referral program 
for our e-commerce site where customers will get discounts for referring friends who will also get a first discount to come into the site because I have no customer acquisition cost in this case. So I'm happy to give some margin away to first customers that are coming through a referral program. We're also going to implement a local segment marketing program. Israel is a very dynamic population and not everybody speaks Hebrew. For example, there's a large Anglo population. There's a large French population. We also have a large Arab population and a large <coughs> religious population. And we're going to be deploying specific local marketing strategies to target these segments in order to bring them into the Vinia franchise. And then at the top of the pyramid, so important is what we do at a professional level to build the profile of the brand with all nutritionists and doctors across the country. So these are the layers. And remember, we're starting with the layer at the bottom, which obviously is an important baseline in building the pyramid of revenue. But as we build these layers over the next three months, I'm, I am confident we will continue to be able to generate additional revenue momentum. So I want you just to kind of step back and say, well, what does this mean? The fact that, you know, we're going to generate in our first full month, let's say between 78 and anywhere between 78 and 90, $95,000. What does this mean? Small population of 7.8 million, 30% of the population above the age of 45. What does it mean for we get, when we get into the U.S.? Well, look, you know, the size of the prize, as we know, in the U.S. is huge. We have... A 330 million population. We also have the benefit of a, a, a larger aging cohort in the population with 35% of the population above 45. And if you do your numbers, you can extrapolate where this could be based on our ability to get our strategy right and execute the right way. And that's what we're focused on. Because if I can generate the kind of numbers you've seen today in Israel with a population of 7.8 million, it really makes me excited and the team excited to take on the opportunity of the USA, given the size of the prize that we have there. And that's what we're now gearing up to. And we have the confidence now. And we're starting to build the important learnings here in Israel. We don't want to learn hard. If we're going to learn hard, we want to learn hard in a small market like Israel. We learn hard in Israel so that we can do the right things and execute with perfection as we drive our launch in the U.S. at the end of Q1. I talked before about going from execution to results. But if you're not building results based on foundational capabilities, you can't scale the business. And everything that the team have been doing here has been with scalability in mind and building capabilities that drive scalability. So I'm happy to say we are now in the process of implementing Salesforce as our CRM tool here in Israel, and it will be a critical component of our launch in the US. We're utilizing Google Analytics with every single decision we make multiple times a day, and we're about to implement Yotpo, which is a very, very important um, partner, which allows our customers to rate the performance of our business, our products, our service gives us direct feedback. We can post this feedback on our site so consumers coming in can get a very good representation of reviews. And it also gives us an understanding of people that have purchased the first time and the likelihood of them repeating. Because the focus now for the business is making sure that we are driving those first time users into repeat users. And then from repeat users, into loyal users, because then we have a significant lifetime value for each of these consumers, given the necessity for them to want to take Vinia every day. We're also using a unique product called Hotjar. I was going to take you through a video of it, but for the interest of time, I think I'm going to, I'm going to skip it. But what Hotjar does, it gives us heat maps to understand exactly where people are on our site, what they're clicking. And we actually have videos of every single person, obviously anonymously, that come into our website, we watch a video and we can see everywhere that they're looking with their mouse and what they're clicking and where they're spending more time 
and what they are missing so that we con can continuously optimize. So next week, we will be coming back with our, with our team and looking at certain parts of our site that we need to optimize in order to improve conversion. So these are the critical core tools that are going to be part of our toolkit every single day as we look to build these critical capabilities. The USA first quarter B2C plan is currently being built. We are in the final stages of hiring a head of marketing and biz dev that will start December 1. We found a great talent that's very passionate about the business and we're excited to have this person on board as continuing to build out our dream team. And we're starting to build a very powerful differentiation strategy. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this today, but potentially in early next year when I come back and share with you more details on our U.S. launch plan, I'll go into this a lot deeper. But the name of the game is meaningful differentia differentiation. And we have a, an amazing God-gifted opportunity to redefine the entire category as a means to demonstrate why Vinia is so superior versus competition. And I'm going to spend one minute explaining this to you because it's really important. Vinia is the only, only player in the market that is utilizing Pi Seed Resveratrol. Pi Seed Resveratrol comes from the skin of the red grape. We, as we've talked about before, we have the unique capability through our biofarming technology to be able to concentrate the Pi resveratrol 100 times greater in our cells versus how it is found in the actual red grape. And it is always in its natural structure. And you can see the structure of our Pi resveratrol has a unique glucose group which is so, so important because it drives our bioavailability superior advantage versus competition. Competition does not use Pisces resveratrol. They do not have the technology or the means to manufacture at the scale and the natural structure that we can manufacture our Vinia Pisces resveratrol. And they use polygenum, resveratrol from polygenum, it's a Japanese weed. Every you look, and you can go to Amazon, you go to Vitacost, you look at every single player. There will 95% of them will have resveratrol from polygenum or resveratrol from yeast <clears throat> or synthetic resveratrol. These resveratrols are inferior. They have significantly less more less bioavailability. We are six times more bioavailable. And we are much longer lasting. We have peaks after the first hour and the fifth hour based on all our clinical trials. And the competition has one peak after one hour. So improved bioavailability, superior bioavailability, plus longer lasting resveratrol. Plus we are the what I call the crown kings resveratrol, passing resveratrol versus Polygenum allows us much greater efficacy. And this will be part of our superior platform that consumers will understand that men were created equal, but resveratrol was not. And we will totally disrupt the category where consumers are yearning, yearning to understand someone to be transparent, to be able to help them understand what's going to work for them and what is not going to have the same ability to deliver. So I'll go, you can see I'm very passionate about it because we want to wake up the consumer and disrupt them, almost like slap them across the face to say, hey guys, listen, this is why we're so unique and different and we have the credentials. It's amazing. We have this God gift credentials. So I'm really looking forward to taking on that uh, battle as we hit the US market. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is really interesting and very cool, is that we're also going to have very clear segmented targeting to some key high affinity and high value group. For example, the evangelical market is so big in the US, roughly 90 million people 
that have a tremendous amount of support for Israel and for Zion. And obviously understanding the importance of wine in the context of Zion, in the context of a historical perspective. We have a huge opportunity to in a unique and more, more and a, like a, a, a different level of spirituality and meaningfulness target this audience in addition to our functional credentials. And we've just bought the URL vineyardfromzion.com, <coughs> which is a URL we are likely to use as we go into the US market to focus and we can do precision marketing, targeting and building an important relationship with this such an important community. So you can see we're thinking about that, that, that the game plan and the strategy as we go after the big prize in the US of A. So that's, I guess, a really hopefully a good update B2C. I'm gonna go quickly into where we are with Batori. Um, it's been great working with them. They're fantastic partners. Um, we right now, without, without getting into too much detail, we have some important customers that are already well down the sales funnel. And we're hoping that shortly one of them will pop and you'll be the first to know. Uh, we've also finalized a top 30 list of major food, beverage, and nutraceutical customers, which are Batori Foods' own customers that we will now begin targeting for the sale of Vinia. And we're right now in the process of training all their key sales and marketing personnel on the science of Vinia. We're busy finalizing all our marketing and sales materials. And between now and like Christmas time, we want to make sure we hit five of these customers covering off some of the big categories that we're going after, whether it's snack bars or whether it's um, um, <clears throat> chocolate, whether it's cereals, different areas where we think Vinia has very, very important applicability. And right now we're going through all the regulatory work that's required for, for Batori to be set up according to the FDA as what they call a foreign source importer. So they can start to import all of our product X uh, factory Israel. It's exciting starting to build momentum. The belief and commitment from the Batori team is there. And I think it's going to be a great partnership as we go after <clears throat> these major, large titans of industry who are looking for better health and wellness credentials for their respective brands. Um, you've seen a lot of communication uh, recently regarding our um, advisory board. Uh, I'm really excited. We, we, we have a, an amazing team of dedicated partners with just fantastic, relevant experience that can really challenge me, can support me, um, and can really hold hands with the rest of the team in driving the success that we're looking for across the business. Um, you know, from Dr. David Brady, who's a, a licensed naturopathic medical physici physician, um, He's board certified in functional medicine and clinical nutrition. So he's got the best of both worlds coming together. He's a fellow of the American College of Nutrition, published multiple peer reviewed scientific papers uh, and textbooks. He's working closely with us on the science and the application of the science. He's thinking broad in his, in his, in his vision uh, on where the business can go. Um, and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying working with all of, the, all, all of these players um, and David adding tremendous value in this area. Uh, we recently announced um, Roberto Chait, advocate Roberto Chait. Roberto is a highly experienced um, advocate, has a, has a wealth of experience across international law, assisting uh, companies in building long-term partnerships in, in highly um, unique, uh, creative transactions. And Roberto has already been heavily involved in some of the connections that are so important to our business and will continue to also provide us with the the broad also legal legal thought leadership as we think about how we take this business to the next level and i'm sure many of you know Aitan popper you know Aitan is, is a you know i would say he's unique in the industry specifically from a cannabis perspective um Aitan was co-founder co and president of med relief um, med relief corp was um was sold in 2018 for $2.5 billion, was the largest cannabis exit to date. He built this business. Um, he's vested in our business in many ways. 
um, and he's helping us significantly as we bring cannabis to market and how we commercialize it, how we scale it in the right way to make sure that we're able to harness as much of the value chain as possible. And then as far as new team members that are working with us, you know, more hands-on day in and day out, um, we have Dr. Rona Applebaum, somebody that I've had the pleasure of working with very closely in the past. She served previously as um, Coca-Cola's first chief science and health officer. Uh, she actually brought tremendous thought leadership to the industry and developed and executed executed the company's global health and well-being strategy. Um, previously, she was executive VP and chief science officer for the National Food Processes Association. Rona understands a regulatory environment better than anybody else. She's creative in how to solve problems. Um, she understands the players. And for us, this is so, so important because we want to accelerate our regulatory process so that the regulatory process actually moves ahead of the commercial side of the business so that we have the freedom and flexibility to play as opportunities come up from other markets. So for example, next year, the focus is the US for us. But at this time, Rona and our VP of Regulatory Affairs, Michal, also a very experienced player here in Israel, will be working on driving the regulation of Vinia and some of our other products across markets like Canada, across greater Europe, across um, Japan and Australia, which are priority markets, because we want to be able to move quickly to those markets where already we have a number of parties interested in our products and our technology. And then just given the fact that we're moving now to actually scaling the business, which is so exciting, it was so important for me to bring on board somebody that just had a wealth of experience um, in manufacturing, in quality assurance, um, and in the supply chain. And, um, and Nat Alvarell um, is, comes to us with 25 years of experience in biotech pharmaceutical manufacturing. He's also uh, an investor in the company, invested previously in the company, so he's vested. He spent a large part of his, agree, uh, uh, his experience with Abbott Bio Research um, and Bristol Myers Squibb. He understands what it takes to scale a business. So with these players really supporting me and the team, I really feel that we're, we're bringing people with a depth of experience and a breadth of experience, which is very, very complimentary. And I'm so excited to be working together with this, what I call the dream team. So I want to end off by saying, you know, the big focus for us, as you've heard from me now, it's like it's little steps here in Israel, but important steps, just like a baby. The first few steps are very important so that you have the confidence to be able to take some big steps. And we're building that confidence. It's humble confidence. This is very, very important. And I say this to the team all the time. We have to, we've had a great six weeks and there's lots of momentum and positive energy, but we can't get complacent. Complacency is the world's worst disease. And we have to be humble in our confidence. And we have to know that going to the US, we're going to the big playing field. But we're excited to come to the US. And uh, you know, uh, I thought it would be appropriate to end the presentation with a favorite movie of mine from my youth coming to America. And we're, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to America and looking forward to really playing in this larger playing field. So thank you for hearing me out. I know I went a little bit longer, but hopefully it gave you a good understanding of the fundamental of the business here in Israel and the granularity. And I'm going to stop now to take um, some questions. Okay. Let me just take a breath. Yeah, and for everybody that uh, this is Justin on corporate communications, uh, we will re respond to every question. If we don't have time here today, we will definitely get back to everyone. Um, and for all the Nat fans uh, in the crowd, yes, Avril, Nat Avril is the new VP. Thanks for picking that up, Justin. Okay, um, just want to give me a quick scan here. Okay, so let's start first. Um, apart from Vinia, uh, when can we expect new products? Um, 
So basically, from a, a superfruits nutraceutical perspective, I think you're you're well aware of our of our of our pipeline that we have. Um, we have our olive-based product and pomegranate-based product. We've actually started to receive a, a lot of uh, interest in our uh, olive-based uh, product, uh, which is quite unique because it's the whole complex of, of olive polyphenols, which is our unique point of difference in the marketplace, also in its natural structure without any calories, um, which will ha have the benefits of uh, helping to improve cholesterol levels. Um, we're working hard to bring that to market. Initially, we were looking at bringing that to market in 2022. Um, and and where, where my head is at on, on that right now is that if the size of the prize and the demand from certain major customers is there, it is something that we, you know, we can bring forward. It's just about a matter of being able to balance what we're doing on Vinia and our olive-based product um, at, uh, you know, at the same time, kind of as they say in the industry, to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. So it might be you know, a phased launch with a specific uh, major customer whilst we're focusing on really, um, on really building a vineyard out specifically in the North America market. Um, do you have plans to produce a product in, in North America? Um, well, I think it's a, it's a great question. Um, from, a, from an overall uh, superfruit nutraceuticals perspective, um, you know, we're building, and just a good opportunity to give you an update here. Um, we're building a state-of-the-art facility together with our partners at Suva. I mean, it's going to be mind-blowing. Uh, robotics, um, high degree of automation. Um, we've really been able to do this at a, a capital cost, which is um, extraordinary when you look at the overall economics. It's not capital intensive. We've been really smart on how we're doing things. And I'm very appreciative to Ori Han and his team there and all the work that they're doing. Um, our intention is to continue to build scale here in Israel. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy. You know, when you look at the cost of shipping powder, it's not, it's not expensive. And we have the capabilities in the scale. So right now, from a superfood nutraceuticals perspective, you know, the intention is to build the scale here. This is very important to us. Um, as it relates to the U.S., obviously, you know, in other markets, specifically in the cannabis space, we have to be, um, you know, a little bit more uh, flexible in our thinking. Uh, we did communicate that um, um, we will be opening a facility in Boston, in the Massachusetts area. In a, um, it will initially be uh, for investors to be able to come and see what we're doing, to have an understanding of the technology and for um, um in order to, to to really see it live, because you know seeing it live is is it's just it's breathtaking. Um, the intention is to to work. It'll be a small facility, but the intention is to work together with the authorities and to get um, the appropriate cannabis license from an R and D perspective, and then to look at um, you know, scaling <clears throat> scaling that license to be a commercial license, so that we can uh, when we're ready to commercialize. We're actually able to do that and sell within the um, broader Massachusetts market. Now, obviously, in the U.S., you have to be close to where your market is based on the regulations. And as we bring cannabis to the marketplace, this will be an important facet. Our footprint will be driven by being close to the market. And then, obviously, you know, Canada for us is a significant opportunity. And, um, you know, it's going to, at the right time, be important for us to be able to uh, set up the uh, facilities um, in, in markets like Canada. And what's great is, you know, Nat Averill, um, part of his um, previous life, he actually um, ran himself um, a, a cannabis business uh, where he had went from bud um, and did the extraction all the way through to retail. So Nat will be setting up the, the small Boston facility for us because we feel it's very important to have the presence in Boston. Um, Ted Stanford, when will Vinia be available for... Uh, for sale in Canada. As I said, we're working uh, with Health Canada. We're starting the process now from a regulatory approval perspective. Uh, I'm hoping that end of 2021, early 2022, we'll be able to um, have an on the ground um, business um, in Canada. Um, So Greg Dominic is asking, why isn't um, Vinia available in the U.S. right now? Um, we, uh, we, we, we started to sell Vinia a while back in the U.S. in 2017. 
we uh, it was very it was very low key. We sold it in uh, sachets, um, and and basically there wasn't any marketing focus. The company made a conscious decision at the time not to lean in on the U.S. We were an R and D company. This is 2017, 2018, um, and we um, um, we made a conscious decision to really focus our efforts towards the cannabis side of the business. Um, so basically, um, we've we we've, we've kind of halted the availability of our product in in the U.S. Um, and we are right now setting up our entire supply chain from scratch. We will not be launching in the marketplace um, with sachets. We will launch with uh, actual capsules. Um, we will obviously be building a much stronger e-commerce business as well as moving to on the ground when the time is right. Um, so basically, it's a conscious decision that I, I actually made coming into the role. I said, you know, there's no point you know, selling a small amount of video in the market. We're not selling the right uh, format that people want. Uh, we're not uh, doing it the right way. Let's 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 step back. Let's get the marketing right. Let's get the learnings right. And that's exactly what we're doing now in Israel. And we'll take these learnings into the U.S. marketplace. Um, so you know, I have a lot of questions here from people, and I just kind of summarize asking me about psychedelic uh, um, products um, and a few other uh, mushroom cell production. Um, look, you know, we're very, very focused on executing the play on our superfruit nutraceuticals and on cannabis. Um, you can see where the superfruit nutraceuticals is growing in momentum right now from an execution perspective. We're making great progress on the commercialization side on cannabis, and I'm looking forward to talking to you in the new year to share more of our progress milestones. Um, we are, at the same time, any good, brave, bold company that are innovators are always looking at the horizon and what's next. And in fact, um, Zaki Rakib, who's my partner and the chairman of the company and the, one of the co-founders and major investor in the company, he's leading a specific team that's working on what's next. Where can we apply our biofarming platform technology? Because as you know, technology can be applied to any active ingredient, secondary metabolite and primary metabolite that comes from the plant or the fruit. So Zaki and the team are working at looking at multiple different opportunities. And in fact, every single couple of weeks, we get companies coming to us saying, wow, we heard about you. Can you guys do this? Um, and in most cases, we can. But the work needs to be done to be able to look at for that third vertical of the business that we will start to look at in <clears throat> and I would say the next 6 to 12 months and start to put even more resource, we have to make sure that this is the right vertical for the company. And for me, the right vertical for the company is around what I call the human utility value, driving human utility value, making a substantial imprint and change in behavior of human beings and how they live and how they operate and how wellness is integrated into their lives. And we're working on some big ideas in that space. Um, and we'll go through a proper, like a proper stages and gates process that will be reviewed, obviously, with myself heavily involved and aligned with the board on where we decide to focus our resources. But this is a separate team that's not in any way linked to all the work that we're doing to stay focused on executing our superfood nutraceuticals and to execute our cannabis side of the business. And I talk about the term human utility value because I always say, if we're providing breakthrough human utility value through our technology, we're going to drive that heck out of shareholder value. And that's just you know how I think from an overall layering, cognitive layering perspective, as we think about the strategy of the business and where we need to be prioritizing our resources. I'm going to take a couple more questions. Somebody's asking a pretty good question. What is the anticipated impact of, of COVID on sales projections in the USA? You know, I, I, I would say to you, you know, generally, the, you know, if you look at um, everything that's been um, demonstrated through um, you know, a lot of the data that's around, the dietary supplements category has actually you know, had a, a very 
positive growth momentum coming from, uh, unfortunately, the impact of COVID. As people really uh, look a, a lot, a lot deeper at themselves, um, and the need to be able to um, have a focused health and wellness approach to a holistic lifestyle, um, and and as a result. Products like where we are in the case of resveratrol, Pisces resveratrol, and the impact that we have as far as increasing overall blood flow, as far as improving overall um, reduction in blood pressure, as it relates to what we do in our ability to actually reduce the oxidation of the LDL cholesterol. Um, all of the bene these benefits, I think you know, people are starting to take their health a lot more seriously. At the same time, people are also, and this is very good for us, are much more discerning in choosing dietary supplements than ever before. People are starting to understand bioavailability. Is this a vitamin that actually can be absorbed into my body? Or am I going to take it one way and it goes out the other way? So you'll start to see the people that have credibility in the industry are starting to talk about bioavailability. And that's what we're going to be talking about because we have such, as I explained earlier, such superior bioavailability. Are starting to better communicate their science. And our, our science is grounded in multiple clinicals, all peer-reviewed uh, or published in peer-reviewed journals, scientific journals. So, you know, I think the, what I would say, the, the tailwinds are in our favor as far as the U.S., with people being much more concerned about the health and wellness and also being much starting to be much better educated and discerning and a lot of this was driven by the fda putting heightened attention on companies making claims suggestions that were true as it related to COVID, and and riding on that wave so people are a lot more aware they're starting to notice and it's going to allow for a much more fairer Okay, sorry, I had a little connection problem. So it will allow for a much better, um, much better level and more fairer playing ground for everybody. Um, coming up to uh, five to. Um, Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us. We have dozens of questions that Elon did not have time to get to. Um, so please expect an email from me. Uh, we will uh, respond to everybody. Uh, it looks like Elon has lost uh, connectivity, uh, but thank you so much. We are gonna continue to do shareholder updates monthly um, and we are always happy to, um, you know, respond to shareholder questions and ideas. If you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, my email is justin at bioharvest.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I think um, we use this opportunity to cut her off. Uh, but thank you very much. Have a great day.